I want you to imagine for a moment what you would do with an extra thousand bucks a month. Seriously. Maybe it's food, maybe it's gas, maybe it's a guitar you always wanted to buy. Maybe it's a road trip with your friends. Whatever it is, I'm not talking about a loan. I'm not talking about going to debt. There's no catch here. This is a payment by the government to you, a citizen, for being a citizen. That's it. Sounds crazy? Well, it might just help save our economy. Hello, my name is Woodson Buck. I am a freshman studying business analytics at the University of Tennessee, and today I'm advocating for the UBI, or Universal Basic Income. I'm qualified to talk about this subject for two reasons. First, I've done the research. I know what the numbers look like, and I've seen the data. And secondly, I genuinely believe in UBI. I think it will help us as a whole, not just people who are in poverty. I stand ready today to defend the thesis that UBI helps to fix inequity, reduce the cycle of poverty, and lead to better lives for millions of people. I'll talk to you about what UBI is by starting off with the history. In the 1960s, President Johnson declared a war on poverty, which extended the social security programs of FDR and created new programs like food stamps and housing assistance. At the time, people you may know, Milton Friedman and Martin Luther King Jr. advocated for an expansion of these programs called UBI. At the time of the 1960s, UBI saw pretty large support in the U.S., and there were actually programs that were implemented in the, U in, in the U.S., which I'll talk about later. Over time, though, and especially after the election of President Reagan, support for UBI fell. This is largely because the economy did very well without the UBI, so people, especially politicians, seem to forget about the poverty problem. Recently, though, UBI has seen a second surge, a pretty massive surge, and this is in large part due to presidential candidate Andrew Yang, who proposed for UBI. Although he did not succeed in winning the Democratic primary, his ideas have been highly influential, as seen by the recent stimulus package proposed by Trump, which would put $1,200 in the hands of every American household until the coronavirus epidemic is over. So you may be asking, well, why is this needed? Why is UBI going to fix anything? And I'll tell you, poverty, inequity, and a lack of access to resources are still felt by millions. That's true in the 1960s, and it's true today. But today, we face even more issues, and this is why we've seen the second surge. According to a study by McKinsey, over or up to 375 million jobs globally are at risk by 2030. This is a massive number. And if you're like me, you've probably been to a McDonald's recently or some other fast food restaurant and you've seen a kiosk where you can order food without having to talk to anybody. And this is nice for introverts, but for many workers, this means a loss of their job. This is significant because many people working in fast food or in jobs that can be automated like drivers are often in the lower, t in the lower wealth bracket. So that means that poverty, we're going to see a large increase in poverty over time if we don't do something about it. According to the Urban Institute in addition, while the top 1% from 1963 to 2016 saw a sevenfold increase in wealth, the bottom 10% went from a valuation of zero to negative 1,000, meaning they're now in debt on average. Finally, for people who are in poverty, who often rely on the minimum wage, according to a study by the Center for Economic Policy Research, if the minimum wage would have kept pace, it should be more like $25 instead of $7.25. And if it were more like $25, people in poverty would be more readily able to pay for things like bills, like food, transportation, and help better their situation. But currently, 725 is chaining them down to where they currently are. And I'd like to restate more technically what UBI is so you can understand what it is. It's a cash-based, guaranteed, non-means-tested government citizen program. What all of these things mean is that the government gives you money, over a certain amount of time, so from the age of 18 until you die, every month, for example, $1,000, so $12,000 a year. It's non-means tested, meaning you don't have to take any tests, there's no drug tests, and that's it. That's the whole program. There's no catch. You can spend the money on anything. And that's important to remember because we are providing citizens, ideally, with a reward indiscriminately for being a part of the richest nation on earth the United States. 
It is an abomination that so many people live in poverty while the rich are thriving. UBI is going to help fix these issues. But you may be thinking to yourself, well, wouldn't people get lazy if they're given a free handout? And also, how can we afford this? Well, if you thought these two things, you thought the two most common myths about UBI, and I'll debunk them very quickly. According to a wider quiz study, which is a social policy firm, people don't become lazy when they get UBI. They studied UBI by giving a certain amount of people in a control group, UBI, which is $1,000 a month for a certain amount of time, and another group, no UBI. For the group that received UBI, they actually often spent time researching new job opportunities and job trainings with the more free time they had instead of spending their whole day lying on the TV, playing video games. It's a myth that the poor are lazy in general. And so to say that people who are poor or even to say that people who receive UBI will become lazy, it's just not true, as shown by a study. In addition, we can afford it. By using deficit deficit spun, by using deficit funding, the same wider quiz study found that the GDP will increase by all standards. A different study by Niki Foros found that that number would be 12.56% over eight years. That is significant, and that helps everybody. You, me, it helps your grandparents, it helps your brothers, your sisters, it helps everybody, rich and poor, and it's going to help our nation become better. So... What are the benefits, you might be asking? Well, there's a lot of benefits. According to a Marinesco study done in 2017, UBI helps increase well-being, grades, it lowers crime, it increases nutrition, it increases family time, and it increases the rate of higher education. Now, I could spend a long time talking about all these awesome things, but really all you need to know is that for the group that was tested, overall they were happier, they performed better in school, their crime rate was lower, they ate healthier, and they spent more time with their family. Who wouldn't want that? This sounds like a pretty good deal. And this is the reason UBI works so well versus welfare programs. When we give people the right to choose what they spend their money on, they're going to spend it on lots of different things, helping to stimulate the economy, spending time with their family, and generally living a more free life, which is the goal of UBI. So, has it, has it been done before? Well, it has been. In fact, it's been done in the largest United States state, Alaska. Since the 1980s, the Alaska Permanent Fund has helped Alaskans by giving them a portion of oil profits. It's been very, very successful. It's a very popular program. If you ask any Alaskan, they will tell you they love this program. And it's kept a significant amount of Alaskans out of poverty. So, what can you do? Well... If you're not a politician, not necessarily a lot, but there's still some things you can do. You can vote for people who believe in UBI, like presidential candidate Andrew Yang. Or you can talk about it to your friends and family. Tell them that UBI is good. Talk about it, really. Tell them, tell them the numbers and dispel the myth that the poor are lazy or that we can't afford it because we can. And if we do, we will create a better society for everybody. UBI is helpful, it's viable, and it's economic. Across the board, it will help us. It will help you and it will help me. As have been stoned by as have been shown by studies and as have been shown by different anecdotal stories. We need UBI, and it's up to you to vote people in who can implement it. Thank you.